national income. The study of economics is rooted to the basic, economic problem of, scarcity, which says that human wants are unlimited, in relation to the resources, which are limited. Therefore economics is the study of how human beings make choices, to allocate scarce resources, which have alternative uses, to satisfy their unlimited wants in such a manner, that customer can maximize their satisfaction, producer can maximize their profits and society can maximize its social welfare. In previous sessions you might have heard of terminologies like national income, which is the total income earned by all the people and institutions within a country, from the production of goods and services, usually measured over a period of one year, and per capita income which is the total amount of income earned by all the people and institutions within a country, divided by the total population, or the total number of people. In this section we'll dig deeper into it, and understand national income better. We'll cover important topics such as circular flow of income, basic concepts of macroeconomics, national income and related aggregates, and how to measure or calculate national income. Before we proceed we request all of you to subscribe to our channel, and also do not forget to like and comment your doubts and queries and stay tuned for more content. Circular flow of income. The unlimited and recurring wants of human beings have made production process a continuous process. In this process different factors of production such as land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship are combined together for production of goods and services, which flow between various sectors of an economy in a circular flow. Let's understand this process in depth. Assume there are two entities, firms and households. Firms refer to the economic units which carry out production of goods and services. These are run by entrepreneur who hires labor, employs service of capital and land, and undertakes the task of production. While households include individuals or families, who undertake consumption. For instance let's say that the firm intends to produce t-shirts, for people to wear them. Now here the firm will need some inputs in the form of raw materials, labor, and land to set up firm etc which will be owned by households. Now the firm using these inputs adds value or increases the utility of the raw material and thus transforms it into a product. This is the production or generation phase, which is to do with the production of goods and services. The inputs offered by the households which are land, labor, capital and enterprise is categorized as factors of production. Here the product produced by the firm for household consumption, as well as the factor inputs or the factor services provided by the households, is termed as real flow, or physical flow, as there is only exchange of goods and services taking place without exchange of money. The real flow determines the magnitude of growth process in an economy. For example, if more of factor services are offered to firm, more will be the volume of production and more will speed the process of economic growth. Distribution Phase Now that the product has been produced by the firm using inputs, or as we can call it factor services supplied by the households, it is essential for us to know that if we deliver a service, or something to someone, we do expect something in return, at least in economic sense, we do. Similarly the household expect, to be compensated or remunerated for the inputs provided. Therefore the firms have to compensate the household for their services, and this forms the distribution phase which is also called factor pricing, where the firm compensates the factor services, in the form of rent for land, wage for labor, interest for capital, and profit for entrepreneurship. Distribution is the study of, how the national income, or the total income arising from what has been produced in the country, is distributed through salaries, wages, profits and interest. Consumption, or disposition phase. Now that the firm has its product produced using factor services, and household being compensated for their involvement, there is a need, on the side of the firm for someone to consume their product, and compensate them for the product purchased from them, so that they can continue with the production process. And there is a need for the household to consume the product to ensure their survival. So from this we have our third phase, 
which is the consumption, or disposition phase, which is concerned, the use of goods and services for the direct satisfaction of individual and collective wants. Consumption activity, is the base of all production activity, for if not for consumption, there would have been no production. In this phase, the firm offers their product to the household for consumption, which household purchases, with the use of the factor income earned from firms, by providing factor services. Thus the income generated by firms, and distributed to household as factor income, reaches back to firms, as the price paid for the product. Also the flow of factor income, from firms to household as reward for their factor services, and expenditure made by households on purchase of goods and services due to which money flows back to the firm, is termed as money flows, or nominal flow. This explains the circular flow of income where a. Household supplies factor of production to the firm who employs it to produce a product. b. The firms offer factor payments for the factor services received from households as rent, wages, interest and profit. and c. The household purchases the product from firms in return for the payment of money earned by providing factor services. Another way to understand circular flow of income is through this simple example. A dairy farmer A, sells milk to a person B, who purchases it from A and works as an aggregator in the business, and forwards it to a firm C, which processes it and makes cheese of it, and sells it to A and similar people for consumption purpose. The crux of this illustration is similar to circular flow of income, which says that every consumer at some stage becomes a producer, and every producer at some stage becomes a consumer of some good or service. Just like A, B and C, all hold the title of producer at one line of transaction, and consumer at another. There are certain assumptions to the circular flow of income, they are. First, it is a closed economy, that is no external sector exports or imports. Second, there is no government in the economy. And third, household do not save anything, nor do they pay tax to the government. They spend their entire income in the purchase of goods and services. Also total production equals total consumption. Factor payments equals factor incomes. Income of household equals expenditure on goods and services. Money flows equals real flows. This is also one reason why national product equals national income in a two-sector economy as the national product, in terms of money value of goods and services produced, is distributed completely among the productive factors. Also, what we studied here is under the assumption that in an economy, there is just two sector, the household, and the firm. There are different variation to this concept which are a. Circular flow in two sector economy with financial markets b. Circular flow in three sector economy C. Circular flow in four sector economy. Before proceeding with variants of circular flow of income, let's understand the concept of stock and flow. These are recurring terminologies in macroeconomics. Some of the macro variables, such as circular flow, national income, GDP etc. are flow concept while others such as national wealth, money supply, which is the money in circulation, is a stock concept. Stock variable, refers to that variable which is measured at one specific time which may have accumulated in the past. For example, the value of an asset in the balance sheet during a particular year. It is a static concept, which indicates it does not have a time dimension. While flow variable, refers to that variable which is measured over an interval of time. For example, the total value of transactions, like sale or purchase, income or expenditure, during an accounting period. It is a dynamic concept, which indicates that it is bound by time and has a start time and an end time. Circular flow of income in a two-sector economy with financial market. In the previous variant of circular flow of income, we assumed that the household spent the entire part of their income on goods and services, and that the firm pays of the factor services with the entire income earned. In reality this is not the case. 
In this variant we'll see what happens, when household and firm do not spend their entire income and save some part of it, and how their saving will affect the money flow in the economy. When households save a part of their income, their expenditure on goods and services reduce by the amount they have saved. Which also means that the firm will receive lesser of income. Reduced money receipts indicate reduced spend indicate reduced spend, or laying of fewer workers. This will lead to the fall in total income of the household. Thus, saving reduce the flow of money expenditure to the business firms, and will cause a fall in economy's total income. This withdrawal of money from the circular flow, in the form of saving is also called, leakages. But savings by household need not to reduce aggregate spending and income if they find their way back into flow of expenditure. In free market economies, there exists a set of institutions such as banks, insurance companies, financial houses, stock market where household deposit their savings, here we are to assume that all the savings of the households come into the financial market. New firms which have the interest to expand, seek investment in order to expand their productive capacity. Therefore, they reach out to financial markets and borrow money. This money was what was deposited by the households earlier with the bank. This way the money that was withdrawn from the national income finds its way back. And this process of introducing income into the circular flow, is referred to as, injection. With all this we can understand circular flow of income in two sector economy with financial market with the help of the following illustration. A. Firms seek factor services from the household with the help of which they produce goods and services. B. Household get compensated by the firm for providing factor services. C. Household spent a part of their income in consumption of goods and services and save the other part with financial market. D. A part of the money distributed by firm to household, reaches the firm when the household purchase the product, while the other part is received by the firm when it makes borrowings from financial markets for future purpose. Circular flow of income in a three sector economy. In the circular flow of income in three sector economy, in addition to households, firms, and financial market, Government intervention has also been accounted for, as government purchase and expenditure also comes into play, besides the income and expenditure of the household and business firms. Here government purchases are injections in the circular flow, while transaction is leakage. This can be better understood by the following illustration. Let's take the model of circular flow of income into sector with financial market, and introduce government into it. Let's understand the flow of income and expenditure between household sector and the government. Money flows from government to household in the form of a. Transfer payments like scholarship, old age pension, relief, sickness benefit etc. b. Factor payments for hiring factor services of households, wherein the government undertakes the role of producer, to produce goods and services in the economy. Money flow between firm and government. A. Money flows from firms in the form of direct tax like corporate tax, and indirect tax such as sales tax. B. Money flows from government to the firms, when government grants subsidies or tax benefits to firms, or when government makes payment to firms, for the purchase of goods and services purchased from firm. C. A part of the income earned by government is also saved and deposited in the financial markets. Government also borrows money from the financial markets to meet its expenditures. Circular flow in four sector economy. We now turn to explain the money flows that are generated in an open economy, that is economy which have trade relation with foreign countries. This can be understood by the following illustration. Let's consider model of circular flow in three sector economy and introduce foreign sector into it. Firstly, households provide factor services to foreign sector, in return for which it receives factor payments. Households also receive transfer payments from foreign sector. Households also make payments for the imports done. Secondly, firm receives revenue from foreign sector for sale of goods and services. Firms also make payments for import to foreign sector. 
Also like the business sector, government also export and imports goods and services, and lend to and borrow, from foreign countries. Similarly government also receives payments from foreigners when they visit the country as tourist. Now that we have studied circular flow of income across various sectors, let's understand the need and importance of circular flow of income. Circular flow of income is very helpful in studying the equilibrium position of the economy. State of equilibrium happens when the money generated is completely distributed and completely spent, or in another way it is the state where total leakage equals to the total injections occurring in the economy. Mathematically speaking this can be understood as saving plus taxes plus imports equals investment plus government spending plus exports. Any imbalance in the equation, points out the distortion in the circular flow and thereby impact that occurs in the economy. It also helps in estimating national income, as national income is estimation of aggregation of any of economic activity of the circular flow. It is either the income of all the factors of production, or the expenditure of various sectors of the economy. Circular flow also helps us to understand the interdependence. All the sectors in the circular flow model are mutually dependent. They rely on each other and cannot fully operate without other sectors. For example firms need the financial sector to borrow money for the investment, so that they can buy more of capital goods and expand their operations, similarly the financial markets need the households to deposit their savings which is what they lend to the firms. The last but not the least, to identify and study the impact of leakages and injections. Continuing from the condition we studied of leakage and injection, while understanding circular flow for equilibrium position of economy. When leakage exceeds injections, then total output exceeds total spending. This happens when households are saving more, or due to heavy taxation or when imports are greater than exports. This leads to recession or fall in GDP, and ultimately for the economy to contract. With this we have completed the topic of circular flow.